right, welcome everyone to a brand new episode of Bid Nerds. It's your daily nerd out <laughs> on the most interesting car day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick. I'm coming to you from the downtown Las Vegas Container Park, as well as my partner Michael Deeb in San Francisco. How you doing, Michael Deeb? Yeah. Good, man. I'm coming to you from the yet unnamed studio that we are crowdsourcing the name from the Nerd Herd. So um, if you guys can take a look <clears throat> at this mess and tell me what you think, uh, we will name the studio based on, uh, you know, what best caption wins kind of thing, right? You know, how about this? Yeah, I think that's good. So let us know in the comments below and we're going to pay attention to all those. <laughs> and I don't know if we'll do a contest or just pick one that we like from the comments, but we will yeah. announce it when we get to a thousand subscribers. We're getting close. Okay. <laughs> uh, the nerd herd is stepping oh, up. You, you guys are spreading the word and we really appreciate that. If you're new yeah. to the channel and you're like, what is this that we've been hearing about this nerd, big nerd thing? We find the most interesting car from all the auction sites. We have a conversation about that car uh, and we make a prediction. And the fun part is we marry our conviction or sorry. <laughs> we should be convicted for having such a terrible yeah. show. There ought to be a law <laughs> against it. Uh, we marry our <laughs> predictions uh, with what actually happens. We reconcile right. uh, reality with our stupidity, and it always goes off the rails. So stick around to the end to find out the results of the car that we talk about today. Today, we are uh, we are talking about a car that I actually really like. I know you probably picked it for me, or at least you probably picked it because we're, 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 we're rooting for this platform. Uh, yes. It's coming out. Uh, the marked platform is the platform that we're talking about today. Michael Deeb, take it away. What's the most interesting car of the day today? All right, John, what we're looking at on the marked platform is this 2005 Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet with 18,000 original miles offered for sale out of Portland, Oregon. This car was equipped with $13,000 in options. Now, before you start laughing at me for that, you have to go back to 2005 and realize $13,000 in options was a lot of money in options. Um, the really that was the a Honda Civic. Thing, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the option thing really took off after like 2010 with the luxury brands and now uh, spending $60,000 in options at your Porsche or Ferrari dealership or your Lamborghini dealership or your McLaren dealership um, uh, is like nothing. That's like a drop of water in the bucket, but $13,000 in options in 2005, which was nearly, let me remind you nearly 20 years ago. That was like, Holy God. Um, this car's got ceramic brakes. It's a manual transmission. I think it looks really really good on the 18 inch sport techno wheels this car also has a sport shifter i'm not sure if that was like original equipment to the turbo s or if it was a standalone option but this car has the sport shifter which um john you put one a uh, sport shifter on your uh didn't you have that um the 993 c4 didn't you have a sport shifter in that and say every, it really made a big difference every 996 that i've ever owned if it didn't come with a short shift kit the gt3 short shift kit i put one in yeah. it's one of the greatest yeah, mods you can do uh, to the it's amazing, huh? Platform, yeah. Right? So, or nine nine seven. So, yeah. I've always, I, admittedly, and I don't know if I've said this on the show ever before. I have always looked past nine nine sixes. Um, I feel like the GT two might be a little too hairy, and uh, the GT three would probably be the one I would like. I love the way um, uh, C four S looks in the rear, um, and on paper, a fortieth anniversary just sounds like it'd be a great car for me. But I. I I am looking at this car with the painted lower like front valance um, and the sport techno wheels and the ceramic brakes and the fact that it's a cabriolet and I'm like, God, if you had to have one car for the rest of your life, I'm telling you this 996 Turbo S cab would probably tick about every single box you could possibly imagine. Um, and I just, I'm looking at this car thinking it's a car I would absolutely love to own. I would have so much fun in this car, John. I'd probably keep a bottle of uh, of uh, suntan lotion in the glove box and be the happiest guy for now till eternity. These cars are now bringing kind of crazy money. The question is, will it bring the kind of crazy money that it needs for the consigner to let it go on the marked platform? So this was a $155,000 car at MSRP nearly 20 years ago. It only has 18,000 miles and it looks to be in very good conditions. The photographs are, are um, 
pointing out the smallest little dings and scratches uh, that are on the car from regular wear. So they're very honest photos, and it looks like it's a very well-presented lot. The car is sitting at just $57,000 on 21 bids. I think that this is, in today's market, you know, $125,000 car. The question is, what can Marked get for it, and where's the reserve at? So um, with all that being said, a Turbo S cab with, um, you know, da-da-da-da-da, like just low miles and in really good condition, I still think this needs to be like a $115,000 car. Um even if you're not expecting to still get $130,000, $135,000 for it, which is kind of what I think it's worth. So $115,000 is my bid as I send it back to you, JP. What do you think is going to happen for this particular car on this platform? Well, it really is a beautiful car, and the Turbo 996 is just such an excellent, excellent Porsche. I mean, Porsche actually got it right with this one. The 996, much maligned, uh, you know, everyone talks about styling and all kinds of things. And there's, uh, there is controversy surrounding 996s, but the turbo has really kind of fixed a lot of the problems that people, or, or at least a lot of the criticisms that people had of 996s. Obviously the engine having uh, the Metzger engine, so you don't get to deal with, uh, with the crazy IMS failure that is very, very, very prominent on uh, the naturally aspirated cars. Um, this is not the M96 engine. Um, it's just it's just better all around. And, you know, not being a cabriophobe, it's 2023. Enjoy the top down. You're not going to have sun tan lotion, Deeb. Let's be real. We're both bald guys. You have to have sun block, uh, you know, because yeah. uh, especially here in the desert, right? Now, um, I yeah, I absolutely love this car. The thing I... Th there's a couple of things, one, that I, that's jumping out at me. I'm slightly concerned about the fact that this car, un, sorry, I was trying to pull up a picture under the hood. Um, I don't know why there's no option codes under the hood. Um, usually, mm -hmm. usually on the under the hood, um, there's, there's the option codes under the hood. And on the, on the photos of this car, this is, man, marked is, I, I do like the people that marked, but I'm not a huge fan of, the usability of the user interface. It's one of the clunkier yeah. ones. Um, yeah, it's photo 85 in the bucket. And and uh, as you're pulling it up, I can see what you see, which is that, that that option sticker is not there. The twins of that sticker should be in the books, but they don't open the books and show it to you. So that's kind of a miss. Yeah, so that makes me think that it was repainted for some reason. And you know, it's one thing for a respray on the outside. Uh, but the underside usually means that the hood was mangled and then looking at the, at the or, car or facts, there's no mention of anything like that. So it, it really is suspect that that's missing. Can you think of any legit reason why there would not, why that sticker would not be there in a car with so few miles and now and no, for the record, I, we're not saying that it was in an accident. Yeah. We're paint speculating. Meter, yeah. There's a bunch of paint meter photos that show, I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. It, 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 listen, either the dealer forgot to put the stick or no, because the, I think they do thing, that at it? the port. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if they do it at that. That's not, I'm, you're really testing my memory now. Do they do it at the factory or do they do it at the port where they put that sticker on there? Um, it's entirely possible that the sticker came off, but you would the car think was that originally the delivered that, in Florida where there's a lot of humidity. And there's another reason why we, don't yeah. like, why we kind of say, you know, be careful with Florida cars. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's really interesting, but you would think that the guys that marked would, would, speak to that because it, it is something you would look for um and the, the people that are really shopping porsches would know that and and be wanting to see it same way you'd look for um you know matching vin stickers on a honda or a bmw you know that that that's something they do on every panel so with porsche you really get the goods because you see the the build matrix um under the hood and so for that dot to be present you, you definitely have to be able to answer to the question so um that's that's kind of a shame that it's not there you know, the, the thing about this car, I just, I know the S has a little bit more horsepower than the standard turbo, um, mm -hmm. but turbo 996s, it's so easy to get a little extra power. So the S right. has the X51 or something like that. Um, so yeah. it gives a little bit more poop, but is the premium that you pay for an S really worth it? I mean, I guess as a, as a collector car, uh, sure. Um, but as a driver car, I mean, how much more 
is the S worth than a, a regular standard 996 turbo in the exact same condition? You know, uh, yeah. are we talking about a 10% difference? Are we talking about a 50% difference? Um, no, I think it's in that 20 to 30% range. And that's a gray, that's a gray estimate. Yeah. That's just my knowledge. Um, and it's just, it's a little more horsepower and ceramic brakes, but otherwise the cars are the same. Um, and I'd rather so, yeah, have the car a- with, with, with steel brakes and, uh, right. you know, spend just a few thousand dollars and you can get this thing to be 500 horsepower like that, you know? Yeah. So that, that 10 to 20% premium that you're going to pay, you could get way more power and coilovers and all yeah. kinds of other great right. things that. Yeah. Uh, and if you're planning to go out and, and drive your car and rip it, then that, then the, the standard one is the one you want. Um, this one with less than 20,000 miles is kind of an investment grade car in an, and barely an investment grade uh, condition. It does have a little bit of wear and tear as you'd expect from somebody that bought it. But um yeah, you'd really be sitting pretty if you could afford to buy this car and then still go out and drive it unconsciously and just not care about yeah. stone chips and take it on rallies or drive it to go see your friends in Las Vegas, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but not everybody sits in that situation. So, yeah, I, I, John, that's a fair take um, that you would – the money you would save by getting the standard car, you could only spend a fraction of that to get it to be a better performing car than the S, um, and you'd still have money in the bank. So that that is a good take. Um, but this is a beautiful looking car. Like I said, I love the way it looks on those wheels. You know, the other thing that always concerns me about these is, you know, anytime you look at a 996 or early 997 um, or all water pumping Porsches, really, um, you yeah. know, people buy them and they don't drive them and they sit and they don't go through kind of the shakedown that happens when you do drive them. When you buy, when, when someone bought this back in 2004 um, and they had it for those first three years and they had a warranty for this car. Um, you know, if you draw, drove it normally, normal things that were kind of problems with the 996 era cars, um, some of the electronic gremlins in the door, in the windows, and the regulators, uh, rear main seals that weren't catastrophic but did cause leaks, um, the second gear detent, which is a genuine problem uh, that's specific to the turbos, the second gear will pop out. Um, I've seen not just a few cars that that would have those little things would have revealed themselves in that first 30,000 miles of driving the car regularly. And if you had, those things would have been under warranty and would have been taken care of. Now this car has 20 something thousand miles. So whoever gets it is going to get it while that car is kind of still in that shakedown period. And now those repairs are going to be, you're going to have to pay pay for them rather than the factory paying for them. So that's something you got to yeah. look out for when you're looking. It, sometimes it's better to, if you're going to be a driver, you're better off buying a car with few, with more miles and service records than you are a, a, a car with fewer miles and, and without those, uh, without the proof that those things have been taken care of. Again, very fair take. Say something that we can argue over. Well, yeah, yeah, I right? agree with you I on mean, that one. It's, look, just, it's totally true. The big it question is true, here, but it, yeah. I'm sorry. The big question here really is whether or not marked has the eyeballs for this. We have seen marked kind of flailing. We know the people that run marked. We like them. They're not shady. Like, uh, some people at some of the other, or they're the opposite. Yeah. These guys really are trying. They are genuine enthusiasts and they're trying to genuinely do the right thing. Uh, not just say they are. Um, and uh, by all accounts, they, you know, uh, the proof is that they have been, but, they're just not getting the traction that I think their platform deserves. Um, and so we really got to wonder whether or not this car has a chance. Uh, so what do you think is going to happen, Michael? Deep? Yeah, sorry, John. When I introduced the car, I talked myself right into a circle and went right to the numbers. So this was $155,000 MSRP. The car sits at $57,000 on 21 bids. I do think that this is like $130,000 to $140,000 example, maybe a little bit less given the market and a little bit of wear and patina, say about one twenty-five. dollars So I want Mark to at least get $115,000 for that to show that they're capable of getting at least within the correct ballpark for the car, at least where you could be close enough to negotiate a deal. So I might also be bidding a little bit with my heart, but I'm going to send it to you at $115,000 and say, hey, Marked is Porsche's platform, and this is a, a beautiful, not blue chip, but this is a this is a, a really high standard Porsche, and it has a broad appeal. This is a car that I think a lot of people would want. They should be able to get over a hundred grand for this. So I'm going to give it to you at one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, JP. What do you think is going to happen? All right, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I love this car, and I do agree that it, it that it should be bringing some uh, some. This car should bring a premium. 
it's presented yeah. well. It looks great. There is that question about that uh, the under the hood sticker, which is a big question to me. Um, but I just don't think the S is worth the extra squeeze. I think the the, the fact that this is a cabrio uh, is really going to hurt this car. I don't think it gets anywhere near a hundred grand. I'm going to say eighty five um, at best. Eighty five. Oh. Um, All I just, right. I just don't. I mean, they're just not bringing that kind of money. Uh, what do you guys think? Let's see in the comments below, uh, and we will find out right after this. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you gotta call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that gonna be for sale? It is gonna be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, Gun Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you gotta check out my channel, The Rami Show. <laughs> oh, yeah, The Rami <laughs> Show. Hey, you know, it's funny, I saw um, Steve and the gang over at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. They went out to, uh, there was a, there was a, car show there's a pca show in utah of all places uh over the weekend and god decided to go out there and make a display they 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 did a really good job steve was out there um and the whole gang and about 20 other cars it was it was it was a beautiful setting to walk in or something like that you those of you from utah will know what i'm talking about beautiful place but kind of a not the greatest car show ever, if I do say so. But Gun's display was awesome. If if Gun wasn't there, I, it, it would have been just like a handful of Porsches in the parking lot. Well, they had uh, one of these kind of like art walks in the park type of thing. So uh -huh. a lot of confused people pushing <laughs> strollers around going, what's going on over there? I bought, uh, we went up there with Chef. We took his GT3 RS and while he wasn't looking, I bought him a dream catcher and stuck it in his, uh, in his <laughs> rear mirror mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a good time with that. That's pretty funny. I saw that um, the linen gray cab that is in our commercial, which we've been running for about two months, and yeah. this is not an indictment on God and Classic or Steve or anything, but that car is finally on the front line. So that car is on their website. Well, it actually, has and, you know, it's funny uh, you, you mentioned that because I was there yesterday, and it's in the showroom, but it's sold. Yeah. Uh, it sell. so okay, it sold good, in like yeah. once it actually went public that it was yeah. for sale that that thing went fast yeah it's a beautiful car i mean every time we go on i keep like i'm like when's that car coming to the front I line know, right? i gotta update already? their commercial i really do yeah the car came live and now by the time i can tell the nerd herd that it's available it's already sold so there you go that's how fast they sell cars at god and so you know jump on it or if you see something that they have because they do a really good job um, on their social media of telling you about cars that are coming in. Like right now, the, their media feed is filled with all of the work being done to the yellow 993 Turbo that they're entering in the uh, classic competition, um, which I think the announcer will be named in Monterey. John, you and I were there last year when they um, judged the Bumblebee car that they did. Yeah. But like um, if they get a car and they're going to bring it in when before any of the reconditioning work is being done on the car, um, They'll tell you about the car. So if you see something on their feed that you're interested in, that is your time to act. Like you should reach out then because by the time the car hits the front line, you know, everybody, yeah. it's a, it's a feeding frenzy and the car's gone. So yeah. there you go. Good job. Well, speaking of convertibles, speaking of Porsches, uh, everyone's sticking around waiting to find out the results of this 996 Turbo S over there on our Good friends, the marked platform. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the results, Michael Deeb. What happened? All right, John, one more little peek behind the curtain. Um, you and I use a, a living document, um, and when a car doesn't sell, we put FTS for failure to sell. That's our note to one another about what happened in the thing. Um, on this one, the note should be FTL, as in failure to launch. Because when we looked at the car on marked last week and we spoke about it, it was at $57,000. I guess that the value of this car and that Mark having a Porsche of, of this, you know, this rarity and in this excellent condition, that they should get $115,000 for the car. You were way more pragmatic and are betting the platform saying, look, Mark's got to get their act together. They've got to start proving they can do this or, or you know, they're going to start taking on water. And so you said $85,000, which is way under my bid. Um, 
again, it was at 57,000 when we looked at it. The car failed to sell or failed to launch at just $60,500 on 27 bids. Um, you and I know the guys over um, at the offices at Porsche Digital. Um, you know, one of the guys over there bought my Ruby Turbo Look Coupe, and we've been friends with those guys ever since. Uh, we're pulling for them. But if they can't even get your lowball number of $85,000, like let's just say that the, the bidding went to your number at $85,000. I don't think it meets the reserve at that number. I don't think it sells at that number. So your bid was really an indictment on the platform and not, a, I think, a valuation of what the car is worth. If they can't even get to your lowball number, uh, they, 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 it, it's just not working at the moment. And that pains me to say that because we love those guys and we want them to, we, we want to see somebody pull through and, and get to that mass adoption the way P Car Market did, certainly the way Cars and Bids has done. Um, we bang on them for their photos or their low grade cars, but they're making money. Um, th this, is, this is a problem. If, if Mark can't bring, um, you know, even respectable below the reserve money, uh, where you could at least expect them to get on the phone and try to bridge a post hammer deal. Uh, they, it, it, they've got a they've got a big challenge ahead of them. I mean, with springtime, it's convertible season. Luft is happening. Rensport is happening. This would be the year to buy a car like that. Um, I, I don't think this is a reflection on the economy. I think it's a reflection on the platform, and that pains me to say it. So, John, I, I send it over to you, but man, I, this bums me out. I, I hate to say that I agree with you. Um, you know, it's been brought up in the comments before that, um, you know, we we are sponsored by Godden Classic. Um, and Godden Classic is actually, is obviously a Porsche dealership. We have done work for Porsche Classic. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, Mart is owned by Porsche. But there is absolutely no professional connection with those guys whatsoever. And we, we ish on P car market all the time. And so, you know, people are like, Oh, well you're just chilling for marked because, um, because they butter your bread or something like that. And I, I don't know, you can look at episodes and you can see we've been, we've been pretty critical of marked uh, when the time comes uh, when they do something that we think uh, should, we should be critical of them. And honestly, it's, it's never been about their business practices. And I don't want to turn this into an, another ish session on peak our market. Cause we've definitely done that to death. Um, but the marked people, uh, everyone that we've dealt with and every interaction that we've heard people having with the marked platform has been positive in the sense that their customer service is great. They don't have those, you know, skeezy, um, high pressure things. Uh, you know, they're just, they're doing a lot of things right. But fundamentally the big problem is, is that if you don't have enough cars on your platform, if you can't get out there and attract enough people to, uh, to sell their cars on your site, you're just not going to have the visitors coming back. When you, when you go to the site and you see, oh, okay, there's three or four cars here, uh, and then there's only two cars, and then, okay, there's a car a week. What are we doing here? Uh, and then, you know, because they had some really high-profile success right out of the gate. Uh, yeah. And then just from there, it just trickled off. I mean, some of the numbers, I was like, whoa, that's pretty darn impressive. But now it's like they can't – I mean, this car, this car – should have yeah. sold. This is peak yeah. buying time for convertibles. Um, and, and it's just not happening over there. And I think they're going to have to have a come to Jesus moment where, uh, I, I mean, my opinion is that they need to dig down and find some money and advertise their butts right. off. That's one thing that right. P car market did really well is they were in all the spaces and they should be going after a piece of P car market, not necessarily going after BAT. I think right. that Mark could own the PCAR market space, um, but I don't know. I don't know if they could, they would ever be successful because part of what makes PCAR market successful, honestly, is their scuzziness, their willingness to do things that <coughs> nice people and good people are just not willing to do. Uh, and unfortunately in this environment, I don't know if you can make it if you're not willing to be an a-hole. Uh, I yeah. just don't think that, I think that's the case. What do you think? Yeah. I, I, I think you're right. So the, the, the budget that they would need to create for advertising is to attract registered buyers to their site, to let people know that's a place to go to find good cars, good deals, um, and and an, an integrous business practice, right? I mean, yeah. they are literally the polarity to the way the business model runs at P Car Market. Um, but I, I don't think for any of these platforms, and again, I'm on the 
you know, I come from a sales background. I don't see that there's any shortage of finding cars. And I think Mark has brought good cars to market. I think the hardest part, I think the biggest challenge for any uh, online auction platform, even the live auction platform is getting buyers in front of you and having them looking at the car at the, at the appropriate time, enough time to do their due diligence. And at the time that it's closing so that they can bid one more time and possibly push the car over the top and get it sold. And I think that's the biggest challenge for all the platforms. And I see that's what's happening with Mark. Mark is getting good cars. Um, that black turbo that was on the East coast that we covered last month, that was a beautiful car. And although I, we understood it, that that car just failed to meet the reserve, um, this car at $60,000, I'm going to say is, nowhere near what that car is worth. Um, you know, that, that might be like 55, 60% of the value on the dollar. Um, and so th that to me tells me there's a shortage of, they had 27 bids, which is good action, but not enough people were chumming it up to, to get it to where that number needed to be. And so that's just, you know, like I said, it's just kind of a bummer. I think they need more registered bidders to drive these numbers up and get these cars sold. And is it is it too late to start advertising for them? I mean, you know, to me, it's spring, and we got a big Porsche summer this weekend. I, I or this year, I think it's it's now or never time for them. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, there's no doubt that they've gotten a handful of great cars, but you need more than oh, they had this really nice car and that really nice car. You need a bunch of cars. Well, you true. need cars yeah. like that all the time, and so yeah, I, I don't disagree with you that, that the eyeballs of the buyers are really what's important, right? Um, yeah. But uh, in, the, the, to keep those it, eyeballs coming back, they got to have inventory. If there's no inventory, well, the eyeballs aren't coming back. The, the, it's so you and I are arguing semantics, the chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. My feeling and what I'll stand on is if the black car sold and this car sold, you'd get, you'd get, start getting more cars too. I think the cars come when the cars that you have yeah. sell. You're not going to sell anything until you get more buyers or you get more eyeballs looking at the auction. If those cars start to sell, then the cars will just start trickling in. The cars will find you because they know if they bring it to you, you're going to sell it. That's, that's my feeling. And again, it's debatable till the cows come home. But uh, I don't know, man. This, this, like I said, this, this well, result. Let, let me uh, yeah, let me ask you, Michael yeah. Deeb. I mean, I don't know if yeah. we have how much time we got here, but yeah. you know, someone you get the phone call, Michael Deeb. We need a hero. Uh -huh. um, you are now hired as the CEO of Mart. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Yeah. Oh boy, that's a good. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, you don't mean uh, no, I'm accepting a answer. job at Cinnabon. Sorry, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't, that's a tough one. It really, yeah, I, I, I like your idea. You got to advertise and get the buyers. Um, you know, if I, if I was working for Porsche Digital, I'd want Porsche to put their name on it. I think that would help it. I don't think anybody associates the Mark platform to Porsche's money, and. Uh, and, and Porsche Digital might argue that it's not Porsche's money, that it's investors' money, but Porsche Digital is running it. Um, and that tie-in, I think, could be valuable if they're willing to flaunt it. And I don't know that they are. Um, so, boy. Would it, I mean, I, yeah, that could be a that could be a you know a front row seat on the Titanic. You know what I mean, like that, like a, a luxury suite. <laughs> if you're Mark, do you say, hey, let's uh, and we have the connection to all these, you know, to Porsche? Do you go, well, all right. Let's start putting Porsche dealership inventory on here. Let's start getting, yeah. if th there's 13 classic dealers in the country, let's let's give them incentives to, to put at least one of their cars on the platform every month. That's 13 right. dealerships. If one, if each dealership did one car on the platform, uh, you know, that's a dozen more cars that would be great cars and they'd be backed up by Porsche dealerships, the Shield. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's not a bad idea. And then along that lines, you could do um, like a classified section right. so that the rest I mean, of the cars could be on your platform. But and then you could have uh, sponsored branding by Porsche Classic. And I would I would totally tie in the Porsche. And then you really would steal P car markets in because part of P car markets, you know, cachet is that they're the Porsche guys. Yeah. Um, and yet they're they're so not like, yeah. they're really not. And yet these guys are and they refuse to use the crest. So I. It, yeah, it's a it's a weird thing. Like I said, again, failure to launch. Like, get, like let's get this show on the road, man. It's it's, it's now it's or never. It's time for them to get crafty. You yeah. know, it's like okay, we're gonna we're gonna really hone in on our basic soft skills and be really nice. So like, like no, guys, you're you have a shot at eating the lunch of one of your competitors, and it ain't BAT. Sorry, it's just not. But there's this other one sitting out there that's just ripe for the picking and they're just like, doop, 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 doop. I don't know. 
Uh, maybe we'll see them over the weekend for a Luft Cult weekend. Are you guys going to Luft Cult? Uh, we're going to be there, and hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, there's a drive on Friday, and there's uh, there's the all, two, kinds all kinds of, of stuff. Fun. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna get in the old yield air cooled car Thursday morning and head to uh, head to Knob Hill Cafe and have dinner Thursday night. Yeah, that's gonna be fun, man. I can't wait to see you there. I hope um, I make it. <laughs> we, driving a classic car, a thousand miles, is always fun. We um, it well, you're gonna drive 500 miles to get up here. It's 530 yeah. miles to get to San Francisco. It's um, the last 30 miles that I'm most worried about. My friend Al and I went and. Uh, did the route yesterday for the oh, drive nice. on friday and it dude i'm telling you i'm, I'm very excited because we picked it from a map we sat over the weekend in front of my computer and just said all right let's take this oh, let's, let's talk about that, that on the next episode guys yeah, all right super fun. all, all right. right we will see you guys tomorrow with the most interesting car of the day bye maybe bye i think we're going no! get those words